wonderful shepherd of us all. Open our hearts and minds to your call. Help us listen as you call each of us to care for others in some way. Teach us, guide us, lead us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and redeemer. Amen. If you haven't figured it out by now, today is what the church calls Good Shepherd Sunday. We have had three wonderful scripture texts that tell us what that means. And I thank Lou and Sharon and Jim for bringing those sacred words to life for the rest of us. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus walked on this earth, the people he ministered to, you might say his congregation, were fishermen, artisans like um, potters or stone cutters. They were farmers and they were shepherds. So when Jesus taught and used metaphors such as seeds and weeds and vines and, and um, those who care for animals, Jesus knew his audience and he knew that they would understand what he was talking about, and they could relate to those images. Now, I don't know about you, and just like I asked the children, I don't know any shepherds personally, and so uh, as in our stories today, so sometimes that, that's hard for me to relate to a shepherd if I, if I, just, if I don't see them and I, and I don't know who they are. I, I was thinking that teachers and preachers of uh, today's world may have to use... Uh, different metaphors or images to make their points. I mean, maybe something like cars or um, computers or cell phones. Are those the, the new metaphors? I mean, how about, I got an email from Jesus today, and he said he would friend me on Facebook. <laughs> hmm? No? Or I got a text from God, and he said, call whenever you like. I'm listening. Okay, that didn't sound quite right. <laughs> so I'll have to work on my contemporary metaphors. So, so let's go back to the shepherds, at least for today. Uh, and yes, I do have trouble kind of understanding and relate it to them. But then I read the text again and, and thought about shepherds in my life. Our gospel lesson today tells us that Jesus called himself the good shepherd. Jesus continues by explaining what he means by describing what a good shepherd is. Now see if this is the way you heard it. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now, I I think this means, uh, yes, I mean, in places in our country or in, in our world, Christians are killed for their faith. But I think it, I also take it as meaning like putting down something that I would rather do or taking time out for my life to, to go help someone else. If someone calls you up and you just put cookies in the oven, what are you going to do? You're going to turn off the oven and go. So you are laying down your life, what you had planned for the day, your agenda to go help someone else. Number two, the sheep belong to the shepherd. The shepherd knows his or her sheep In the sheep pen, there are other sheep that don't belong to the shepherd, but he or she leads them also, even if they are strangers. When I think of all that's going on in the world, uh, you know, I don't agree with you, so we'll just kill you. You know, that's not what Jesus said. I don't know you. You are a stranger and alien to you, but I'm going to lead you anyway. Come on, you're invited. The sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. In other words, the sheep come when they are called. Now in Psalm 23, we found more descriptions of the good shepherd. The shepherd provides for the needs of the sheep. They shall not want for anything. The shepherd provides green pastures and still waters for the sheep to eat and drink. The shepherd restores the soul and well-being of the sheep. The shepherd guides and leads the sheep down right paths. In other words, the shepherd leads the sheep where they will survive and thrive. Even when the sheep are in the darkest valleys, 
The shepherd is with them, so they fear no danger. The shepherd fights off the wolves at the door. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. The shepherd provides food, a banquet, even when bad things are all around. My cup overflows with blessings. Now, by the way, that Psalm 23 was written about a thousand years before Jesus was born. And so Jesus puts himself into that psalm in this way when he talks about being the good shepherd. It just really echoes what was written so, so, much, so long before that. So, and yes, the Lord is the good shepherd. However, I'd like to talk about the shepherds who are all around us, us. I am referring to the people who God places in front of us in our lives when we need goodness and mercy, just like the sheep in Psalm 23. When life gets messy around us and we have a crisis, personally or in our family, we, we sometimes hear people say, if you need anything, just call. Or let me know what you need or if you need something. I mean, do those phrases sound familiar? Has anybody? They are meant to be kind and comforting. But what if we don't know what we need? I'd like to tell you about two times in my life that I especially noticed and remember those words of crisis and help. I might have mentioned earlier when I first came here as a student that I live in Lebanon now, but I grew up in Mascouda. That was my hometown. And my husband and I raised our three children there. He was from Staten Island, New York, but he fell in love with the Midwest, so we came home and moved in next door to my mother. That's another sermon. But anyway, my <laughs> I mean, he liked my mother. He always said, I know I can get a good meal somewhere. But and <laughs> But Mike and I were active in uh, school organizations, you know, our kids were in school, and that included the Muscuta Athletic Association. So, and we supported and, and raised extra funds to help the athletics in all the public schools in the school district. In 1997, we were trying to raise funds to put lights on our football field at the high school. So one of the fundraisers was selling programs for the Scott Air Force Base Air Show. My husband was standing on the corner of Route 158 and uh, Wary Road, I don't, some of you may know where I mean, uh, uh, when a car swerved to get out of the traffic and it hit him and it crushed his leg. Um, and being an insulin dependent diabetic, this was not a good thing. And thus began like 10 years of struggle with his health. One Saturday morning, three, year, three years later, Mike's blood sugar was out of control. You know, those AccuCheck that you do at home, it, it didn't even register, it was so high. And had to take him to the hospital again. And, uh, but it turned out the bones in his ankle were dying. They were necro uh, necro ne necrosing. Um, so he was in the hospital a week. And every other day they do surgery to try to dig out the dead bone, and, uh, but trying to save what they could. I was working full time and I still had two children at home. I visited him before and after work. Um, his condition was not good. So his mother and his brother and his youngest sister flew out from New York had to see him. One day during the week, I came home from work and visiting Mike, and I was exhausted and worried. I pulled into my driveway at home and saw that Mike's brother and sister had recruited my brother and my children and they were building a large wooden ramp up to my back deck, to my back door. I was in tears. I, I, I hadn't thought that far in advance. Like, how am I going to get them in the house when I get home? But they knew what I needed. And, and they, they just, they, they were my shepherd. They gave me what I needed. They led Mike and I in right paths, you could say, and restored our souls through the dark valley of our crisis. Just like the psalm. Three years later, Mike and I were able to move when we, to Lebanon because we found a, a handicapped accessible house. And so we moved. 
In 2007, I came home from work at 9.30 at night. I was working a noon to nine shift, awful, but anyway. But I found Mike had passed away. Um, he had been very unhappy and he didn't want to continue living with all his many health problems. And God answered his prayer. They say he had a heart attack. I called 911 and then Pastor Don. Sharon's <laughs> cousin. <laughs> He was at my door within minutes, and then his wife came, and then friends from church came, and then, you know, and so we made coffee and sat at the table, even as the ambulance was taking Mike out of the house on a stretcher and a bag. These shepherds prepared a table before me in the presence of death. The next morning, I went to the funeral home to make the arrangements. I took my son with me and my sister-in-law went with me. And so driving home, you can kind of imagine the state of mind I was in. Again, I pulled in my driveway and noticed several cars parked in front. I walked into the house to see five friends from church. They were cleaning my house. <laughs> and they said, we know you're going to have family flying in here and they're going to be staying with you and we know you would like a clean house. Again, I was in tears. <laughs> These shepherds knew what I needed before I even knew I needed it, before I even thought about it. That's just that your mind's in such a turmoil, you can't think, you know, ahead or whatever. And, 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 and I don't think I would have asked them to do it anyway. I mean, I, you know how proud we are. Oh, don't come dirty dishes in the sink. Anyway, but I share these stories with you for several reasons. Jesus is the good shepherd who brings us together as a flock, as a community, as a church. Jesus gives an example of what a good shepherd should do and be. And taking this example put before us in our scripture lessons today, we can learn to be a good shepherd in our flock, in our community in our church, right here. We can become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ by caring for the sheep around us. Be aware that sometimes we have the opportunity to be the shepherd and sometimes we are the sheep. It kind of works that way. Never be afraid to go to Jesus, the good shepherd, or the shepherds around you in your life. Tell them about your dark valley. Your wolves, you have to keep at bay. Give up the, the idea that they are too busy, I don't want to bother my friends. Stop that kind of thinking. Because you are denying them the opportunity to care for you. And, and that's what God put us on the earth to do. We're supposed to be to take, uh, take care of each other. Love God, love others. It's that simple. Others want to show you green pastures and still water. And I think that's why we come to church. We come to worship, together, to thank God, to learn from Scripture, and to pray for each other. Look around to see the sheep sitting next to you in the pews or in front of you or behind you. Do you know their name? Do you know their story? Because everybody has a story. So don't judge them because you don't know the dark valley that they may be in. But you might just be the one God is calling to lead them out of that dark valley. You might have the joyous opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus and Christ right now. They may not know what they need, but God might tell you. Now, in 1 John that Jim read, we heard... Little children, let's not love just with words and speech, but with action and truth. This is how we know what love is. Jesus gave his life for us, and we should give life to our brothers and sisters. We should lay down our agendas or whatever we think we're going to do today when a friend calls to go help them. The scripture continues, the person who keeps God's commandments remains in God and God remains in them. And this is how we know 
that God remains in us because of the Holy Spirit that God has given us. My prayer for you is to become aware of who has been shepherds in your life as you look for ways you can follow Jesus by being a shepherd to others. And know, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life as you dwell in the house of the Lord your whole life long. Amen.